Welcome back, everybody, to the Blessed Beyond Measure podcast. I'm your host, CL The Source, your friendly neighborhood hope dealer. Thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the podcast. Pretty soon, I'm going to be kicking off season four of the Blessed Beyond Measure podcast. And it's pretty wild to say, I'm going to wrap up with a couple episodes here um, as I approach 100 total episodes. That in itself is wild to say and wild to hear out loud. So, I'm very excited to kind of wrap up this chapter and really start to create different episodes, um, all kind of within the same theme of personal development, self-help, touching base with spirituality, growth, health, all these different things, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like I mentioned in two episodes ago, that I'm going to be kind of more drilling down on what the subjects is that we're talking about on these podcasts. So uh, I'm going to take some time to kind of write things out, reflect, think about things, come up with new ideas, and really try to formulate a better kind of solid direction that this podcast is going in. I, I do love the direction that is that we've been going in in creating this podcast in terms of being able to have different guests, have different topics that I talk about. But at the same time, as I progress more and more, I'm going to be drilling down on certain subjects and really kind of expanding upon that more and more, just kind of um, to make it a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess a little bit more focused on uh, certain things that that I feel are important. And, um, you know, had I not have gotten to these 100 episodes as I'm working towards getting to, I wouldn't even be in this direction where I'm tight, looking to kind of tighten everything up a little bit more, um, definitely be more organized and, and become a lot more professional with this because I'm going to take this a whole lot more serious than I have been. I do take every podcast serious, but I know that there's this extra level that I could take it to in terms of preparation, in terms of what I want to talk about, in terms of how I can refine my speech and my confidence whenever I get out here to share this stuff with you. So Uh, I'm looking forward to bringing that new product to you, that new kind of material to you, and just that new, better evolved sense of myself to you and just sharing that with you. Um, I shared a couple of episodes ago that I'll be doing some traveling. First stop's going to be in Hawaii, going to kind of set up shop over there to see how long I'm going to be there for, but I'm looking forward to that and seeing what that's going to pull out of me. So be on the lookout for that. I mentioned also I'll be doing some vlogging, uh, so I'm going to add that to the the podcast brand as well. And I've got a ton of great ideas that's been cooking up in this head right here. So I'm just really focused and really looking forward to creating it, bringing it to life and sharing it with you all. So be on the lookout for that. Get excited because I am. That's for damn sure. And um, with that being said, just kind of wanted to do a little quick little update since the last one, but I wanted to kick off the episode by also doing a quick mental health check with myself and just letting y'all know how things are going. At this very moment, as I'm sitting here right now recording this podcast, it is June 13th, Monday, June 13th, and it is the eve of Game 5 of the NBA Finals between the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. And if you have been following basketball, following sports, whatever the case may be, or just following my journey overall, I mean, as you can see, I'm wearing a San Francisco Warriors hoodie right here. That's my team. You know, I spent a little over a year working directly with the team um, for those that have been following my story. So this time around, it really hits a whole lot different to see these guys on stage, see these guys on the big screen at the highest stage, at playing the highest level of basketball. Two of the best teams from each conference are going at it head to head in a series that's tied 2-2, best of seven. And tonight's game five going to be played in San Francisco at the Chase Center in San Francisco, my hometown. And I got to tell you, um, I do feel a sense of calm within myself as it stands right now. But I know looking ahead and, you know, I typically try not to look too much ahead. I really try to stay focused on the present now. But looking ahead, I know that while I'm watching that game, it's going to be very tense. It's going to be a lot of nerves. It's going to be exciting. Um, A lot of emotions. And I'm looking forward to seeing the Warriors do their very best and come out victorious and taking a 3-2 to lead against the Boston Celtics 
and then going into Boston and then just finishing it there. And if not, bringing it back home to game seven in what's going to be an intense, crazy, insane game. But again, not to look too far ahead. We got to look at what's going on tonight with the Warriors, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So in tying that with my mental health, I'll tell you, that has kind of been heavy on the forefront of my mind. Um, This series has been nuts, literally. Every possession, every play has just been off the walls crazy, and every game so far has been an instant classic, and there's been a lot of storylines, a lot of drama, a lot of tension a lot of highly competitive um, plays and a lot of just fiery, testy attitudes going on. So it's everything you want. It's real-life drama. So that's really kind of affected me in a good way because what I'm learning as I'm watching these guys play is that like when the, the odds are stacked against you and adversity is staring you right in the face, you can either fight or you could flight, <laughs> or I, I don't know if I said that the correct way. I know it's like that fight or flight thing, but you can either choose to stand up or you can choose to run away and cower. But that's not what my guys are doing. That's not what the Boston Celtics are doing. Everybody's showing up on the stage. So it's like two um, unstoppable locomotives going at each other and just clashing. And whoever's going to come out uh, unscathed and, and, and uh, emerge victorious, it's going to be deserving um i have a very healthy respect for that boston celtics team i don't really like that boston celtics crowd it's very hostile and how they treated our players and you know it's going to be the same way it is in chase center but they were a little nasty out there for sure uh from all the things that i've seen on tv and on social media and stuff like that so to just know that my guys are out there um dealing with that adversary and coming out on top, just like they did the last game. Hopefully they can carry that over in being here in front of the home fans. I know I'll be cheering tonight. Me and my brother will be watching the game at home in San Francisco and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing them come out with the win tonight. So that's definitely been kind of on my mind in terms of mental health today. But overall, if I had to give it a number from 1 to 10, With everything going on, as I mentioned, the move to Hawaii, um, that begins with a move from where I'm currently living. So there's a lot of moving parts in that 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 require my attention and my energy. And still, while um, making sure that I am giving a lot of my energy to this, to you, the podcast, the brand, the people, right, and to life, and just to also continue to maintain that balance of of uh, enjoying life, taking care of myself, managing uh, my own um, personal growth. So if I had to put a number on it, I would probably say it's about a, man, I always like to say 10. And, you know, I think that uh, I'll probably say it's at like a nine and a half right now, to be real with you, just because sometimes my mind comes in and out of like, oh yeah, what I got to do this tomorrow. I got to do that next week. Oh, this date's coming up. I got to handle this. Oh, I got to do this about money, blah, blah, blah. Like it's a lot of different things that kind of go through this mind. But at the end of the day, when I'm able to kind of reflect on everything and just really kind of bring that energy back to the present moment, back to myself and back to focusing on the task at hand, whatever it is in front of me, then I can really kind of center myself once again. And then all becomes well. And I'm able to kind of see things. It's almost like Neo in the matrix when he realizes he's the one And he just, everything slows down. Not that it slows down on its own, but he slows it down. Like when the bullets are coming at him, like at the rate that bullets come at you and he's able to just put his hand up and just slow the bullets down. That's kind of how I feel when I put myself back in the present moment and I'm able to just ground myself again and I can slow things down, not let my mind get too carried away with what needs to happen and what I need to do and what, you know what I'm saying? All like get overwhelmed by all this stuff that I feel like is stacked up against me or that I need to do. It's more about centering myself and bringing myself back to a solid baseline so I can focus on what needs to be done here and now and just continuously make progress because when your mind tends to get too far ahead of yourself, that creates anxiety, it creates nervousness, it creates all sorts of 
unwanted emotions. Uh, so I'm just doing I'm, my part to do a better job of making sure I don't get that way. And uh, it takes a lot of practice to, to bring yourself back to the present moment. But when you learn how to control it more and more, it helps so very much. With that being said, today's episode is going to be a cool one, just like they all are. But I really wanted to share three really dope life hacks that I've been implementing in my life. And these three life hacks are very simple. I'm sure a lot of people use them already. But for me, I've started to apply them in my life more and more, adding them to my rolling list of non-negotiables that I do each day, uh, particularly in the morning. When I start my day, I try to win the day. But these three things I'm going to give you, uh, hopefully, if you're not already doing these, you can pick these up and start to apply them in your life and find the benefits as well. Number one, one of my favorite things to do as part of my non-negotiable morning routine is to reflect and write in my journal. So it's kind of like a dual practice, actually. I'm reflecting while I'm writing in my journal, I'm checking in with myself. Sometimes I just scribble in there. Sometimes I'll just write whatever comes to mind and I'll just let the pen flow. But most of the time, what I find myself doing when I'm journaling is I kind of like evaluate where I'm at, how I'm getting better. I'm checking in with myself, asking myself how I feel, um, evaluating the day prior or whenever I'm writing what I just went through. It's a really, really cool tool to use. And it's very primitive, very basic. Of course, writing in, in a pen and a pad is as basic as it comes, but the powers and the benefits that, you feel are so profound that for me, it's opened up a whole lot. It's helped me clear up space within my own mind and really kind of allowed me to uh, just put my thoughts onto paper. And that way they don't get so jumbled up in my head because if you know me and I think if you've been following me long enough, I've said time and time again, I was an overthinker. I tend to, um, Think things all the way to the point where I don't do anything. That analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis, you know what I'm saying? And it's uh, it's one of those things that that I felt that was just a part of me that I never felt that I could change. But as I progressed and I've like made more strides in my own personal development, I've recognized I can change that. I've recognized it was a flaw of mine and it still is a flaw of mine but I'm working at it. I'm working at it to improve. I'm consciously making efforts every day to improve in that area. And journaling has been a really, really great tool that I get to go to every morning. Actually, not even every morning. I can do it anytime. As you guys know, I already do a gratitude journal every single day. Uh, but at the same time, I've implemented just writing in my journal, whatever it is, whether it be drawing, scribbling, writing, whatever's going on in my head, like I just mentioned, for the minimum of 20 minutes, sometimes I go up to 30 to 45 minutes, however long I feel like I want to go. I give myself that time. So that's been the first life hack. The second life hack I want to give y'all is, um, and it's a simple one again. The funny thing is all of these are simple. The, the second life hack is doing more of what I love. And for me, as I clearly just mentioned, when I was giving you all a mental health check, I love basketball. I love sports. I love competitiveness. I love competing. I love just moving my body around and being out in the elements, being around other people. And with that being said, this life hack is simply doing more of what I love to do. And for me, that's playing basketball. It's such a simple thing, but just a simple act of getting out to the park getting some shots up, jumping around, seeing the, the, the ball go into the hoop as you, you know, with that, with that beautiful stroke that I got, because I'm a shooter. If y'all don't know, I got that shot. So if you're ever trying to play some defense on me, you better guard that perimeter because I'm going to be just splashing in your face all day. <laughs> but on some real shit, like I, it's a simple thing, but just going out there and playing basketball is – I relate that to when I'm a when I was a kid 
being able to go out into the recess in, into the into the playground, into the yard and playing basketball. That was one of the things I used to look forward to doing every single day at school. I mean, I couldn't stand being in the setting in the classroom setting unless it was something that was stimulating my brain or if it was like to be talking to girls and stuff like that. But I couldn't wait to get out to recess and to you know get out there and play for 30 minutes or you know, do PE where we're playing all sorts of different sports. I was privileged enough to be able to play like badminton. We used to, we used to do that. We used to play basketball. We used to have intramurals with like ping pong, Um, man. I mean, you know, obviously we did a lot of the other stuff too, which is like, you know, uh, a lot of sit-ups, a lot of learn how to stretch uh, running. So um, I kind of developed a love for that type of stuff early, but as I've gotten older uh, earlier on, I mean, Later in my years, I kind of lost that. Now I've refound that and started to bring it back into my daily practices. And man, it's been amazing. It really has been amazing. So I think that's a, a, a simple yet highly effective and beneficial life hack that you guys can add to yourself as well. And I definitely feel like you'll, you'll find the benefits in that. And to be honest with you, you're not always going to have time, but you got to make time to do the things that you love. For real, the healthy things that you love, obviously. But, you know, that for me is one of the things I love doing. And another life hack for me, um, especially when it comes to work on this, uh, working on my podcast, working on the brand, working on creating content. um, A huge life hack that I've recently been starting to do a lot more is just switch up my environment. It's a simple thing. You know, I used to think that working out of coffee shops or working out of libraries or going to far places simply to just like do work on my computer was kind of like it it would be a distraction. And uh, maybe it might have been when I was like not in the right mind frame. But now, honestly, going out into a new setting, whether it be a coffee shop, a library or even a restaurant that has Wi-Fi, just grabbing some lunch and just bringing your uh, work materials with you and just doing work from there, especially for those that are doing working from home. The ability to be able to separate work from home is going to be key in your your success because I feel like your your separation of the two is going to lead you to be more effective and productive in both areas because there's a reason why you feel home is supposed to be your sanctuary. It shouldn't be somewhere where you're doing work. In my, in my humble opinion, I feel like you can do it, but what it does, it it tends to jumble the two lives up. And, you know, I know we have one life and everything is all under one umbrella, but at the same time, when you're working, you're in a different mode. And when you're at home, you should be in a different mode. You should be present, more relaxed, more focused on, being able to be there with your family or doing what it is that you love to do that, that that's important to you. Now, when you're working, you should be able to be focused on that. And it's really hard to do that when both of those are mingled like that, when both of those are married. So for me, just a simple act of getting out to a, a coffee shop. Uh, I've even worked out of a bar before, you know what I'm saying? So um, I don't do much drinking, but I might get like an appetizer and just sit there and do some work. If they got Wi-Fi and stuff like that, I can really just sit there and focus on what I'm doing. The key is to find a setting where you can feel most productive, most effective. So um, that's another simple life hack that I wanted to give you all. Try it out sometime. It may work for you. It may not work for you, but maybe it maybe, It could be that the first place that you chose to try to work out of doesn't work for you. Try somewhere else. Go somewhere else where you feel like it's peaceful, where you feel like you're going to have very limited distractions. There are a bunch of places you can go where there's not that many people, really. And internet is pretty easy to to come by nowadays. So I bet you if you look hard enough, you'll find a place that you can kind of just get lost in. You know what I'm saying? And you can really focus on your work. And for me, I go to coffee shops to edit these podcasts, edit my content, um, do work on my MacBook. And sometimes I meet people too. It's really cool. You kind of are able to network 
and be amongst other people that are kind of doing the same thing. And just, it's a different energy that you're around. So for me, it pulls out a, a very type of productive energy. And I'm glad that I kind of figured that out for myself and being able to share that with you. Hopefully that works for you as well. And if not, try something else. <laughs> and so that's it, y'all. That's really all I got for y'all today. Real quick one. Most of my episodes that are going to be done solo are going to be very, very quick. The more long-winded ones are going to be when I have um, guests and everything like that, where I'm interviewing and having conversations that are in-depth, detailed, and, and just fun to have. And I'm connecting with guests on a high vibrancy level. So yeah, that's all I got for y'all. So the top three hacks that I mentioned for y'all is definitely journaling, which is great. I love to do it every single day. Doing more of what you love. For me, that's playing basketball. For me, that's also walking along the beach and just kind of getting some fresh air and getting some sun. Um, and then number three, finding a new work environment. For me, that's working out of a coffee shop uh, specifically. Phil, shout out to Phil's in Westboro and shout out to Phil's in Colma of the Bay Area. They've been uh, a, a real cool safe haven for me and I, I really love working out of that space. I love their coffee. Love the music that they play over there. Real cool people. Good food. Great working space. Strong internet. Shout out to all y'all. And shout out to all the fields and all the other coffee shops where you can work out of. But uh, that's it. Those top three things hopefully can help y'all because I know they've been helping me. But until next time, y'all, thank you for tuning in once again. And if you love this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. Follow on all the platforms, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter. All the links are going to be in the bio. And thank you so much for the support. If you also love it, please make sure you're sharing this with other people and leaving comments and doing what you can to help me flourish and help me build this podcast brand and reach out and branch out to more people. Thank you all, folks. I appreciate you all. Stay up and stay blessed. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen.